Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're looking if there's anything we can do to reduce the chance of our sculpts being used by AI. Before we get into this I just want to make it clear that I am no expert on AI, especially on AI sculpting. But I'm going to explain my thought process that came about with a conversation I was having with someone and hopefully it makes sense. But if it doesn't or you are an expert on AI then feel free to chime in in the comment section and tell me why I'm totally wrong or which bits might be wrong and which bits might not. So we're going to be using this file as a demonstration piece. This is an eye lens for a large robot that I was doing as a commission and while I was fiddling around with this some ideas came into my head and I thought they were worth mentioning. So we're going to take a bit of a detour to begin with. I'm going to select everything there, Shift and D and then X, and then bring that across the side so we've got two copies. And for this first one, we're going to do something that a lot of people do when putting their 3D designs online, and I'm very much against. I'll explain why as well, but it also links to this idea of what we can do to reduce our chance of our models being used by AI. So what I'm going to do here is just select all of these and press Ctrl and J to join these together, which is often what people have a tendency to do. And then they go File, Export, and we're gonna export this as an STL. We're gonna click Selection Only, so it's only those ones that were joined. And we'll call this something like Test Underscore Join, so we know what's going on. And we're gonna export this as an STL. Now with that done, let's select all of these and just G and X those off to the side so we can talk about why this is potentially not the best idea. Now before we go into this, let's talk about AI art in general and specifically 2D art. Now people have some quite strong feelings about AI art. That was quite evident in the last video where we took a photo of Henry Cavill and used some AI software to turn it into a 3D sculpt. And while generally there was a really good discussion in the comments section, some people were very angry about the whole concept of AI art and seemed to be quite angry at the fact that I'd even cover it on the channel. But I think it's important that we talk about these things and I do want to cover them in both a positive and negative light. So in this one, we're sort of focusing on the what we can do to try and reduce our art being used by AI. But I do have another video planned in the future having a look at software that's using AI. And hopefully this impartial coverage of both sides is what people generally want. Or at least you can look at the side that you prefer to look at. Now, I've got this picture up here and we're going to talk about something that's a little bit more 2D related. So AI art is bit more common or at least more commonly being seen for 2D art and you generally find that it is created by taking different bits of different pictures and combining them together and this is relatively easy to do if we take something like this Space Marine head which I just grabbed from online and even using a free bit of software like GIMP I can go into our fuzzy select tool or this sort of magic wand and I can click on the head and say oh we want that and I can just sort of merge these bits of the face together and in fact actually if I put my threshold up maybe somewhere there yeah we start getting a lot more of this all in one go so you can sort of see the idea of what AI art is probably that's probably a bit too far generally doing for 2D pictures where the AI art finds something it wants and finds easy ways of selecting it or perhaps it actually has the intelligence to draw a line around this head to select it that way. But either way it can then start using that head on different models. Now if we come back to our models why am I spouting on about this if we're talking now about 3D design? Surely this is very different. Well, maybe, but maybe not. If I bring up this STL that we created from exporting this joined geometry, as I said, this is something a lot of people do before putting things up on various websites. And we bring this in from the STL. If we go into any form of edit mode and x-ray mode, you can see this is still made up of these different bits that were originally joined together. Now, why is this relevant in terms of this idea of AI taking our designs? Well, if, let's say, some AI program is looking at our parts and it wants a, well, computer screen or some funky lens, with this idea of just joining our objects together and then exporting them, if I go into any form of edit mode and select here and then just hit L, we select the entirety of that piece of the geometry. And I could then P, separate that by selection, and then let's just G and then X that, and suddenly our AI program has got a computer screen that we might see in some AI sculpture. 
or potentially if you rip this apart further you've got this being used in the training of the AI to say this is now a computer screen and then this is a lens. Let's come back into this, I'll select this lens once again, P selection and then G and then X and now we've got a lens or maybe something funkier that looks a little bit hard to create that's L, P, selection, and then object, and then now we've got this other lens. So you can see how easy this is making it by just joining things together and putting them up on Thingiverse or Cults or wherever. We're making for some AI program to disassemble our various parts that make up this object and then getting a repository of bits that we suddenly might see being used in some AI art somewhere. Now, as I said, I'm not an expert on this. I'm not saying that that is definitely what is going to happen and how this works. But if we take what we know about 2D AI art and apply it to this idea of sculpting, this seems fairly logical. Where this becomes even more logical as an assumption is that if we have a look at that Henry Cavill piece that we made in that last video, there's a link in the description if you haven't seen that, when we were looking at this head, we commented on the fact that actually a lot of these bits seem to have seams where they join onto the head. And this might be why this doesn't actually perfectly look like Henry Cavill. It's taking a selection of different sculpts of eyes and noses and whatever and joining them together. And a good comment that was made is this is a bit like a police photo fit where they're taking these bits and mushing them together. So that seems to suggest if we don't want the bits of our sculpture being taken, we want to actually join things together in a better way. Basically, not using the join tool. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. I'll talk through all three, and I'll talk through which one I think is preferable and why. It's actually going to be this first one. We'll come to why as we go through it. But the first thing we can do is just Boolean these together. Now, I know a lot of people think that this is an absolute faff, and it does take a bit of extra time, but it's not a huge amount of extra time. Clicking on the different bits and pressing Control, Shift, and Plus with ball tools, and notice I'm using Shift, because that way we're bypassing the stage where we've got a modifier and going straight to the destructive Boolean. So it really just doesn't take that long. And I could do several bits at a time, but I generally find you get less problems doing this bit by bit. But as long as the bits aren't interacting in any way, for example, all of these rivets here, we can get that all joined together. And we've got some really nice clean geometry. I mean, it's not quads. I'll be perfectly clear about that. For 3D printing, I don't care about quads. And even for rendering, this is not something that's going to be animated in a way that's going to deform. So again, doesn't really matter. But what is important here is now, if I come into face mode and select this face and hit L, Suddenly we select everything, so it's not as easy to steal geometry off of this shape. I use steal in the way that that's just the way I sort of talk about it. This might be something that you voluntarily put up in a place where AI is allowed to use it, so it's not necessarily stealing, but there's that general assumption about AI. Now, the other thing that we could do, let's just move all of these to the side, is that we could take our joined STL and we could use a program to merge this together. My preferred program of choice is 3D Builder. I know some people have been mentioning that they're finding it a bit hard to find where you can download this. I did try downloading this about a week ago and it still seemed fine from the link that I'll put in the description. This does only work on Windows, but all you do is drag it in your object. This is exactly the same one that we used earlier. Say that it's in millimeters. It will say that it's not one object. Click it and it will repair it. And what that does is similar to our Boolean, it's just doing it all together and it looks at the bits where there's overlaps and just tries to take effectively an outer shell of that object. Once we've done that, we can click File, Save As, change that to an STL and we'll call this Test Join and we'll just call that 3D Builder, 3DB. Save that. And now if we come back to Blender and bring that in, still as an STL, Where's that going to be? Somewhere over here. It always comes in in some really strange places. Let's just move that back over here. But we can see that this now has overlapped a lot of that geometry, but sometimes it does create errors. You can see there's a little bit of internal geometry here. It does solve one issue of if I select just a bit of it with L, everything's going to be selected. But if we just delete that face, you'll notice that it hasn't done a perfect job of dealing with these overlaps. Now, 3D Builder is pretty good. It does solve a lot of general problems, but it isn't as perfect as Booleaning things together. My recommendation is to use this first. It doesn't take very long and then see if it's worked and if it hasn't come back and Boolean everything.
But either way, as well as being better, hopefully, for reducing the chance of your objects being used by AI, it also means that you're going to give a better product to the person that's purchasing it if it's an STL because they're not going to have to go in and fix the objects themselves. Now don't get me wrong, I know that most slicer software will fix this for you, but sometimes it does create problems when there's overlaps or more where there's faces that perfectly align. Our third option, and we're just coming back to this object, this is the original one that we then joined together, so we can see we've still got that overlap, is that we can use a modifier. And this is generally used by people who will be doing sculpting, not for hard surface. And I wouldn't recommend this for hard surface, but it is an option. I'll talk about why in a second. So if we go to add modifier, and then we type in remesh, and we click on remesh, you can see that we've remeshed this all together and we can change the voxel size. Let's bring that way down somewhere there to try and make this a little bit sharper, but you'll see we still get this slight rounding of our joining. And while this probably will look okay where it's printed, it's definitely not perfect, and I'd rather keep that harder edge. Now, if I just apply that, and we go into x-ray mode, you can see, again, we've got this clean internal geometry where we've got no problems there, and, what might be a bonus is that if I go into face mode, is that this is made up of so many faces that actually selecting this is going to be definitely more of an annoyance for an AI program, I imagine, than this. So that is a slight benefit at the cost of this non-perfect edging. So it sort of depends what you want. Now, before anyone comments on this, and feel free to comment on where else I've gone wrong here. Now, just to end on, I'm not saying that this is the be-all and end-all, and it's going to stop AI using your designs. As I go through this, I'm just bringing together a cube, and we're just going to Boolean a part of this shape out. This is definitely something that can be done. But if we think of this as a process, this is much more complex than just using that basic select that we looked at earlier. So when I was having a talk with someone online, this seemed like a logical solution, or at least partial solution to this problem. And also, it has the added benefit of generating a better overall finished product if you're sending this out. So it's kind of a win-win situation here, with it just taking a little bit more time. So anyway, I thought that was interesting to talk about. It was just something that came around, as I said, from a conversation with someone online. But there were a lot of people that seemed very concerned about AI, and I thought this might be worth covering. So. Let me know what you think. Am I way off the mark? Or is this something that at least is worth trying to hopefully reduce the chance of your model ending up in some AI sculpture? Have a great day, guys.